anyone here in this room know someone in Illinois that does not have health insurance? Now you'll note I did not ask if you have health insurance or not because I'm appropriate and I generally in public do not ask uh, very specific confidential uh, consumer information. But you know people that, that do not have health insurance. Again, it's important to make them aware of this as well. So again, you know who I am, Charles Watkins. My middle name is Wendell, that's what the W is for. But that's not important right now. <laughs> so I'm not sure why I blurted. <laughs> I was curious. I'm curious why I blurted or curious what the W said. <laughs> All right, so let's get going. Okay. We, we want to leave time for some questions and answers. I'm going to give you the 50 cent tour here. Uh, the Affordable Care Act. That's the official name of the act. The official name is the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. Um, most people in my biz call it the Affordable Care Act or the ACA. Uh, it's also known by Obamacare. Uh, the president has embraced that, and so we embrace that lovingly. Uh, Health care reform. It's known by a number of other non-flattering things by the opposition, but we don't need to get into that. <laughs> but it all is the same. It means opportunities for affordable quality health insurance for people that need it and that's what I'm really really all about there there are people that have health insurance and they move to a higher quality perhaps more affordable health insurance and that's a great outcome but what I and we are mostly about is trying to connect with consumers in the case of get covered Illinois all over Illinois that really, really need this help. In many cases, they have not had health insurance. They may have had pre-existing condition. In some of the communities in which I am responsible for, it's multi-generational. That there are parents and, and grandparents that never had health insurance. That's changing. Uh, in the region that I have responsibility for, there are 100, estimated 114,000 adults that are uninsured. That's going to change. That is changing. And we hope that you can help us change. And we hope that some of the people in this room are going to be able to benefit from it. I feel very confident that whether you know it or not, you already are. Uh, no uh, no uh, pre-existing conditions are not prohibited to get coverage. Uh, they don't charge you more for that. For women's health, uh, you don't get charged more simply because you are a woman. And women know that that has been the case for a long time. Men are just starting to get clued in. Uh, staying on your parents' plan till you're 26. These are all benefits of the Affordable Care Act. I talked about some of this. I stepped on myself a little bit. Uh, there are two primary routes in which this is gonna happen. At least two primary public-facing ways that this is going to happen. There are lots of components of the Affordable Care Act, lots of things going behind the scenes to shift the curve in the uh, increase in health care costs throughout the country, throughout the economy. But what we're going to talk about mostly today is what does it mean for your health and your health and your health and your finances and your finances and your finances. What we find and what we believe is that most consumers that's where the rubber really hits the road. So I've talked about no underwriting based on health or pre-existing conditions. So there are only five things that you can, that, that the health insurance companies can deter, use to determine what you pay for your monthly premium. Uh, I'm talking about private insurance. Uh, and that is your age, uh, a broad geography of where you live, which is primarily a county or more, uh, whether you do or do not use tobacco or not, whether uh, how many people are in the household are going to be covered by the health insurance and the health insurance plan that you select itself. That's for the private insurance marketplace, the private insurance. The second way in which we're going to get lots and we are and will continue to get lots and lots of people covered is through the expansion of Medicaid. Uh, the Supreme Court said that the Affordable Care Act is constitutional. We knew that. 
Now the, now the country has, should have no doubts about this. But what the uh, Supreme Court Act also said is that the federal government cannot mandate that all states uh, accept the expanded Medicaid coverage. Um, Illinois had the wisdom through its elected officials to accept the expanded Medicaid and it is providing mechanisms for hundreds of thousands of Illinois residents to be covered that could not possibly be covered in the past. Since the inception of Medicaid, there is no place in the, in the United States where a person that is 19 to 64, that is single and no de dependents, that has no disabilities, nowhere in the, and is very, very low income, there's no place in the United States of America that that profile has ever been covered. In the state of Illinois and in the other 24 states and the District of Columbia that accepted the Medicaid, expanded Medicaid dollars, those low income individuals can be covered. We need to reach them, we need to share the information with them, and we need to enroll them. Uh, those are the two basic consumer-facing tiers of the Affordable Care Act. Opportunities, if you are at an income threshold, and for a single individual, it's about $16,000 a year. If you're making $16,000 a year in general, you will be enrolled in Illinois Medicaid. And the benefit, the uh, robust benefits of the Affordable Care Act, by and large, and I'd have to really rack my brain to think of any distinctions that are available in the, in the private insurance, are available through Illinois Medicaid as well. If you are making above that threshold, in general, you'll have opportunities to move into the private insurance marketplace. Select a plan, pay for coverage with assistance for most Illinois residents, if you move into the private insurance marketplace, most Illinois residents that do not move into expanded Medicaid will receive at least one of the two types of federal subsidies that are available to them. So you've had a chance to absorb this and I hope that you are sending out those tweets. Um, but it, it tells you that there are 10 essential health benefits which we'll go over it eliminates annual and lifetime caps, and this is really huge. This is huge for those people that have pre-existing conditions, chronic illnesses, uh, a cataclysmic uh, accident. Uh, in my life, I bumped up against annual limits and lifetime limits, uh, and you don't know that until you read the fine print. There is much less fine print courtesy of the Affordable Care Act. You are welcome. All right. Uh, strengthens Medicare and Medicaid. Um, I will uh, forego that unless people have some very specific questions, but there are some very ro robust benefits for Medicare recipients, and the Medicare recipients have to do absolutely nothing except uh, enjoy the benefits that the Affordable Care Act has, has added to their Medicare coverage. Um, 